morning. Good morning. How's everybody this morning? Oh, good, good. Hey, it's great to see you here. Welcome to Christ United Methodist Church. We're so glad you're here on this beautiful day, the sixth Sunday of Pentecost. Uh, if you are a visitor, first of all, welcome. Uh, please visit the Welcome Center in our North X after the service. There you will find more about this wonderful, warm, and loving church, as well as get a blue bag. The blue bag will tell you more about the church and different things that we have going on. This is a great place to be, so if you're visiting, if you have any questions, please grab one of us. We'll be glad to talk to you and tell you about this great place. Uh, the announcements, uh, let's turn attention to the announcements in the bulletin. Uh, Ronnie? Good morning and thank you for being here. Uh, I have made this announcement once before, but there was some confusion. Some people said they never heard it and they didn't know that the organ is now paid for. So. <clears throat> And uh, thanks to your generosity, a, a lot of people gave and were so generous and, and we do appreciate it. And it's so nice to have something that's paid for. Now you see the, <clears throat> the speakers on the wall, we don't like the way they look and they're, they're, it's in a process now that we're gonna, there's going to be a covering, an attractive covering that covers uh, those speakers. So it's going to look like a part of the organ. Uh, that's paid for as well, so we don't have to ask for more money for that. And <clears throat> also, I want to say too, and thank you for this too. There are a lot of you who are, are very generous and giving to the music fund. You have made it possible for us to have special uh, people come in, uh, instrumentalists to come in. These are professional people. <clears throat> we don't pay them twenty dollars. We have to pay the prof professional price to get them, but. They come in and they can do what we ask them to do without any rehearsal. They come in and we can just start off with them. They're ready to go with it. We have a big program coming up for Christmas and we're going to have about a, a 10, maybe 12 piece orchestra with it. So we have to pay for these people. But this is what makes the, our music program special and worshipful and special for you. I want to thank you for what you've given to it. and. And it, there is a fund called the Music Fund. We would, and many people give to the Music Fund as memorials when there's a death in the family or for something else, as an honorarium as well. So that, that, uh, that fund is always open. Anytime you want to contribute to the Music Fund, that's good. Because when we have a big program, I'll <coughs> some people say maybe that's too much money, but it's not too much money. We may spend $3,000 Christmas for what's coming in with the orchestra pieces. It's wonderful and it's for you folks. It, it's not for me and it's not for the choir. It's for you to enjoy it. We thank you for contributing to it and I'm going to shut up. I can keep talking and uh, about it. But again, thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. I look at it as being money well spent. So. Uh, the beautiful flowers on the altar uh, this morning are given by Lane and Sally Stevenson in memory of Frida Stevenson and celebration of her birthday, which is July 25th. And then, as the tradition goes, after the service, please come down and uh, they have little receptacles with the flowers and feel free to carry some home uh, to brighten up your house uh, and brighten up your day as well. Uh, Frida loved her flowers, so thank you so much. Uh, children, uh, we're looking for a, a new director for children's ministries, children and families ministries. It is a part-time position. Uh, Michelle left and then has gone on and we need somebody to kind of fill those shoes. Uh, they will lead the children and family, uh, families of Christ Methodist Church to a deeper relationship with Jesus and be involved in vacation Bible school and different other educational programs within the church. It's a vital position that we need to be filled, that needs to be filled. So if you know anybody who would like it, or uh, know somebody, uh, or if one of y'all are interested in it, please contact the church office uh, so we can get that done. Uh, the Challenger deadline is this Friday at noon, and uh, the kitchen supplies, they've moved them. The old fire marshal came in and said, I can't have them where the combustibles are, so we moved them over to the educational wing. Uh, two meetings next Sunday. 
The finance committee meeting will be at uh, 5 o'clock in the conference room. The church council will meet after that at 6 o'clock in Fellowship Hall. Uh, one thing that's uh, very near and dear to us at this church are the backpacks. Again, this year we'll be turning in, donating backpacks to Southern Hills Elementary School to provide them. A lot of these students, they, they don't have the means, the parents don't have the means to provide them with a lot of essentials that I think we take for granted sometimes. So uh, the school serves uh, kindergarten through fifth grade. So there's a need of special, different size backpacks. Blessing of backpacks will be on Sunday, August the 4th. So bring them to the church on that date. And let's, uh, let's get a big, big stack of uh, backpacks for these children. They need it. Uh, and that would be a wonderful, wonderful thing. So uh, any other announcements this morning by anybody? All right. Well, let's start our service with Coral Introit. Please stand for our call to worship. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent, who may live in your holy mountain. The one who is black and blameless, who does not look ashes, who speaks the truth of the heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor, and casts no slur on the others. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. Please join me with the hymn of praise, number 158, Come Christians Join to Sing. Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffering under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and he stood at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
children come down now for the children's time. We could buy a movie ticket, we could go to the aquarium, we could invite our friends over and go to uh, buy some candy or something with them. That's right, and then we could go to the park and that didn't cost anything, right? That's a good thing. So I wonder about how much do you think it would cost to buy God's love? Buy his food? But could we buy his love with money? Well, we'll talk about that. Our Bible story tells us about the apostles learning about a town called Samaria. And that's kind of a long word, but it's kind of like, say, in the town of Shreveport, where people there were learning about Jesus, and they had accepted his word. And that made the apostles very happy. And so they sent Peter and John to Samaria to go visit these people and to pray with them so the Holy Spirit would come to them. So they got there and they laid their hands on, because that's how they did They laid their hands on people and they prayed with them. And then the Holy Spirit came to them and they were so excited. But there was a man there named Simon and he was looking at them and wondering what this was about. And so he was like, I want to see how to do that. I want to be able to lay hands on people and make the Holy Spirit come to them. How much money can I give you to buy that power? And that made Peter really angry because you can't buy God's love. He gives it to us freely. And you know what we have to do? We just have to ask God to come into our heart. And when we do that, then he freely comes into our heart. We don't have to pay him anything. And all we have to do is to show our love by showing our love for Jesus by how he would treat us. And we, we can spread his love that way. So let's say a prayer, if you will just say it with me, and I'll say it and you can repeat it. Dear God, thank you for being an amazing, awesome God. Thank you for the free gift of your love. And help us to love others as you love us. And to follow you today and forever. In your name we pray. Amen. That's good. All right. Thanks, Jen. Uh, let us uh, now lift up our church family with joys and concerns. Last uh, Friday, just a couple days ago, uh, Fred Wright had a uh, hard cat, had three stents put in. Uh, he is resting comfortably, but wanted to lift him up uh, so y'all could keep him uh, in your prayers. Uh, do we have any other concerns this morning? Okay, I'm very sorry about that. Very, very sorry. Uh, any, any other concerns? How about Joy? Oh, there, here we go. Well, I think I heard this morning that Mickey Campbell had these scars. Um, yeah. He used to have scars on his arm. Yeah. And it was 
All right, well, we'll keep Mickey lifted up as well. Yeah, anybody else with any concerns? What is his name? Preston. Preston? Okay, thank you. Anything else? Any any joys? Okay, Jim will call. Anybody else? Peggy? My Aunt Peggy Jo fell down on her way to Red Box, could not walk. Two weeks, she was dragging her leg. And I encouraged her to keep on praying about this. And she she broke down in tears one night. And she just asked God, just let me walk normally. I don't want to <laughs> walk around, you know, Walmart or anywhere. I just want to be able to walk around my house. And the next morning, she was walking down the stairs to let her nurse come in the house. She went down and was able to walk <coughs> walked out on her deck, no pain at all. And I said, you just keep on praying like that, and they're going to be dancing soon. <laughs> What's her name? I need to give her a call. <laughs> Prayer works, y'all. Prayer works. All right. No doubt. Praise the Lord on that. Yes, Ed. Today is my granddaughter's 20th birthday. I don't know how that happened. I'm not old enough to have a 20 year old granddaughter. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. <laughs> Anybody else? Any, any more? Yeah. I can't see you because of lights. <laughs> Who is? Mrs. Holland. Mrs. Holland is having a birthday. Mrs. Timothy Lee Holland. Yeah, she turns 60. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> it, all ha- it all happens sometime in our lives. All right, anything else? All right, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> Most Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all of your goodness and mercy. Thank you for each day and each wonderful answer to our prayers. We lift up so many prayers today. So many people are in need of of healing, of of help. Just whatever it is, Lord, we lift up these prayers and and we know that you will answer them. Thank you for the simple things in our lives that so many times we take for granted. Our homes, our families, the sun and the stars, flowers and the trees, our daily food and basic necessities of life. Sometimes, Lord, we, we, we don't stop and smell the roses. And uh, we need to, to do that and, and slow down sometimes and, and listen to your, uh, your words and your mercy and your grace. Father, be with those today, this morning, especially Rachel and her family. Uh, such a tragic loss there. Preston, Mickey, Jim, Peggy. Thank you so much for Peggy's Aunt Peggy that is uh, doing so much better. So there's another prayer that's been answered. Uh, hear those prayers of the sick and the, of the caregivers. Be with those uh, that mentioned this morning as well as those are silent prayers that are known only to you. Give them strength to make it through these difficult days. Father, we also pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones or friends. Comfort and strengthen them in their time of need. Father, we pray for our country, for our president, our Congress, uh, for all the people who are in charge uh, and our national leaders. Give them some wisdom and insight that only can come from you. We pray for our local government that they might make the right decisions as well that will direct us in the right path. Lord, we pray for our armed forces at home and abroad. Watch over them and all of the the duties 
and tasks and works and give them a sense of your abiding love. We also pray, Lord, for the forgiveness of all of our sins. We pray for encouragement and upliftingness. When we're discouraged, Lord, you help us get through the tough days. Let us all forgive each other as you have forgiven us. Thank you for leading us down the path of righteousness, the path that leads to life eternal. We ask all of this in your Son's name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please open up your Bibles to the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses 4 through 11. Acts, chapter 8, verses 4 through 11. This is when Philip preaches in Samaria. But the believers who were scattered preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went. Philip, for example, went to the city of Samaria and told the people there about the Messiah. Crowds listened intently to Philip because they were eager to hear his message and to see the miraculous signs he did. Many evil spirits were cast out, screaming as they left their victims. And many who had been paralyzed or lame were healed. So there were so there were great there was great joy in the city. A man named Simon, who'd been a sorcerer for many years, amazing the people in some of Samaria and claiming to be someone great. Everyone from the least to the greatest often spoke to him as the great one, the power of God. They listened closely to him. For a long time, he had astonished them with his magic. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, before we uh, start our offering this morning, uh, I want to uh, talk about a new way of giving that we have here at the church. Do you have that slide, Tim? Did you get that in? Yes. Um, So you probably got an email about this. Uh, For a lot of us, like me, um, I don't ever carry cash around because my kids take it. Uh, And uh, I don't have a checkbook that I normally carry around. So this is a new way that you can give to the church if you would like. Uh, You can go to our website, www.christ-umc.com, and there's a button there that you can click uh, to give online. Uh, Or, if you'd like, you can take out your phone right now. Uh, You can text Christ UMC to 77977. And uh, uh, a link will be texted to you to go to our online giving. And then, of course, you can also give uh, through the normal uh, offering plate uh, giving. Uh, Also, we'll be getting an app soon uh, that you will be able to uh, have with you that will have our announcements. It will have the sermons from the week before. It will have a Bible uh, in the app and a lot of other things. And, of course, from that app, you will be able to give Um, through that app if you would like. Uh, So this is just a new way that uh, a a new way that you can support the ministries of Christ to share the love of Christ throughout the world. Uh, If you'd like to use it, uh, you can. Uh, And also if uh, you set it up with your uh, bank account, there is no fee. But if you use uh, credit cards or debit cards, um, there is a fee, but you can help uh, the church by clicking the button that says we will pay uh, to help uh, that fee. Uh, If you have any questions about that, uh, talk to me or one of the staff members except Ethel. And um, uh, why are y'all laughing? she didn't want to have any part of it, uh, so uh, if, if, if uh, we can help you with any questions that you might have with that uh, and using that new uh, way to support the church. <laughs> Will the ushers please come down for our morning offering.
Let us pray. We give with joy into your kingdom today. May, we, may you bless our offering. Come, O Lord, and work through these gifts. Extend your love through us, we pray. Amen.
please remain standing and let us enjoy these Cokesbury hymns. to Acts chapter 8, the reading from verse 12 through 25. But now the people believed Philip's message of good news concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. As a result, many men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself believed and was baptized. He began following Philip wherever he went, and he was amazed by the signs and great miracles Philip's performed. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent Peter and John there. As soon as they arrived, they prayed for these new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had not yet come upon them, for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands upon those believers, and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given when the apostles laid their hands on people, he offered them money to buy this power. Let me have this power too, he exclaimed, so that when I lay my hands on people, they will receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter replied, May your money be destroyed with you for thinking God's gift can be bought. You can have no part in this, for your heart is not right with God. Repent of your wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps He will forgive your evil thoughts, for I can see that you are full of bitter jealousy and are held captive by sin. Pray to the Lord for me, Simon exclaimed, that these terrible things you've said won't happen to me. After testifying and preaching the word of the Lord in Samaria, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem and they stopped in many Samaritan villages along the way to preach the good news. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our minds May they be truly and utterly faithful to your word, O Lord our God, our rock, and our redeemer. And we invite the Holy Spirit to come. Come upon each and every one of us today to take hold of our lives so that we can be just like Jesus. And that you would use us to do the miraculous. To Jesus' glory. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How are your breath prayers coming this week? Uh, uh, we've been asking you to pray a breath prayer where you come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Have, have you noticed that you've kind of maybe started praying that prayer a little more? Uh, if you haven't started that yet, start doing that this week uh, wherever you are, just whenever you think about it, or maybe you get stressed out or something happens, or you just have a little moment. Just pray that prayer. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Just over and over again, uh, whenever that comes to your mind to pray that prayer. Uh, I know this week I, I had to pray that prayer a whole lot, especially uh, dealing with our friend who died this week and, and the family and just needing that presence of God through that terrible circumstance uh, that went on. And, and the disciples were going through a very terrible circumstance, as you can imagine at this point in, in, in the, the ministry of the church. Uh, here, as, as you remember Stephen, we talked about last week, Stephen had been martyred. He'd been killed for proclaiming uh, Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Uh, and uh, he was killed right outside of the gates of Jerusalem. And, and uh, there was Saul, and the Bible tells us that Saul uh, started persecuting the church. And it scattered, as you can imagine, uh, the, the early believers scattered throughout uh, the countryside, and and uh, but the Bible tells us that they continued to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing? That they, even in the face of being persecuted, they were willing to continue to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, and here we get the story of Philip. Now, this isn't the Philip that was one of the apostles, one of the disciples. This is Philip, one of the seven men who were chosen just like Stephen to feed the widows. And then we talked about uh, uh, that last week. And, and Philip was one of those seven men who uh, was chosen to feed the widows to help in the ministry uh, there. Uh, and during the, the persecution, uh, Philip was, went out to Samaria. And if you know anything about how uh, Jewish people and Samaritans, they did not get along at all. Uh, they didn't even, Jewish people didn't even want to walk on the land of Samaria. Uh, if you remember the, the geography at the time, you had Galilee up at the top, Samaria in the, in the middle, and then Judea with Jerusalem down at the bottom there uh, where it was. And uh, the, uh, you remember that when Jesus was going into heaven, do you remember what He told the disciples? You will be My witnesses here in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And here, that prophecy that Jesus proclaimed is starting to be uh, proclaimed. Here is Philip going into Samaria where no one would have expected him to go. And he's proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. And, and the Samaritans and the, the uh, Jewish people didn't get along. If you remember way back in, in, as in our reading uh, when uh, the Assyrians were coming in and they uh, conquered uh, Israel. The Assyrians came in, they conquered Israel, which was the northern part of the kingdom, you remember. Uh, and uh, when, when they came in and conquered Israel, they took all the leaders and, and people away and moved them to Assyria. They left the, the poorest of the poor there. Uh, in, there. Uh, and then later on, remember the Babylonians came and they conquered the southern uh, kingdom of Judah. Uh, and then they did the same thing as the Assyrians. They took all the rulers and the, the, the leaders and those with influence because they didn't want them rebelling against them. And they took them to Babylon. Well, the difference between these two groups, the uh, group in Israel, they intermarried with the Assyrians. And the people who stayed uh, in Israel, they intermarried with those people that came in which that was not to be done uh, according to Jewish law. 
uh, and the Jewish people that were in Babylon and those that stayed, they refused to intermarry. They stayed strictly Jewish and stuck uh, into that, that culture and, and their belief and their fellowship and their, and their worship of the one true God. Uh, and so when the Jewish people came back from Babylon, uh, the, they did not get along with the people in Samaria because they didn't feel like they were real followers of God. And of course, as they were trying to rebuild uh, the temple, some of the Samaritans kind of made fun of them and it, it, it became where they wouldn't even talk back and forth. Uh, and so for Philip to go into Samaria, this is something that was just unbelievable to, to go across cultural lines to share the love of Jesus Christ. He went into a place that no one would expect anyone to go into, that no one would have expected at all to go in and proclaim the good news. And, and, and Philip uh, was so full of the Holy Spirit, uh, miracles were happening wherever he went and proclaimed uh, the good news. Uh, evil spirits were cast out of people's lives. Uh, those who couldn't walk, walked. Uh, those that were lame, uh, they, they started to, to not be anymore. And, and, and amazing miracles started going on. And people started to follow Philip where everyone and, and uh, Simon the magician, uh, so I said musician in the other service, uh, magician uh, was following because he thought this power was amazing. Now when you heard Peggy tell the story earlier about her aunt praying and being able to walk, how many of y'all were amazed by that story? Uh, why? Because it's amazing to see the work of God when God does the miraculous. Uh, and here Philip is out doing the miraculous and it was so amazing and the good news of Christ touched so many lives that people started to be baptized and started to be believers and even Simon started to believe in Jesus Christ and he was baptized too. And, and I want you to make note here and if you have your Bibles out, you might want to circle this. Where were the apostles? Where were they? They were back in Jerusalem still. They weren't doing what they were expected to do. We don't know what they were doing, but I guess it wasn't much because they didn't write about it in the, in the Bible. Uh, I kind of imagine they were still holed up in the upper room going, man, that Pentecost Sunday was wonderful. I wish we could do that again. Uh, but Philip, someone who wasn't an apostle, was going out and proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. And all of these people who were scattered were doing this same kind of miraculous thing. And I want you to take note that Philip was just an ordinary old lay person that God decided to use in miraculous ways. Uh, many people believe, well, that's the pastor's job to do that. Well, us pastors are all back in Jerusalem not doing anything at all. Uh, and, and God uses the everyday ordinary people to do the miraculous stuff. Uh, and you know there's only two things in the church that are different between me and you. I can do two things that you can't do. You know what those two things are? No, you could get on uh, Rolling Stone and you can get your thing and you could, you could marry someone if you wanted to. But in the church, communion and baptism. Two things. Only two things that are different between Willis and me and y'all. Uh, that's the only two things. Everything else y'all can do as well. And God wants and calls you to do as well. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you are called to do what God wants you to do. And if you don't, then the church won't grow. Because if people were relying on the apostles to do anything, were they doing anything? Well, maybe there in Jerusalem, they were maybe taking care of some things, doing church like normal. But if it wasn't for the normal, ordinary, everyday folk going out and proclaiming the good news and God's Holy Spirit working in them to make people walk and miracles happen, then the church would have died right then and there. If it wasn't for Stephen proclaiming the good news and being killed and the people scattering everywhere, uh, it, the church wouldn't have grown. And God is expecting you 
to do miraculous things for the glory of God. Well, you might be saying, well, I'm, I did that when I was 20. Well, God's expecting you to do it when you're 120. That's how old Moses was. God calls all of us to do miraculous, amazing, wondrous miracles wherever we go. And if we open ourselves to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to use us, miracles will happen like people being able to walk who couldn't walk before if we pray to God and ask God to do the miraculous. We've got to be willing to open ourselves up to be the bearer of the Holy Spirit. And if we're willing to be the bearer of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will work and do amazing, miraculous things. So much that people will come from forever. And Ray said, give me your number. I need to talk to her. Right? People are going to ask for your number. And say, I need, to talk. I need them to pray for me because God is using them to do the miraculous. How many of y'all want to be used by God? I hope all of you would raise your hand because God wants to use you and is called to use you by the baptism that you have been given in the name of Jesus Christ. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you are called to go into the world and be God's witnesses in Southern Hills, in Shreveport, in Louisiana, and in the world. And you are called to cross across lines that people might not expect because we're to love everyone the way that God calls us to love. And God is calling you to be a vessel of the miraculous. Now, the miraculous was happening in such a way that it got finally the apostles' attention. And so they decided to come down and see what was going on there in Samaria and talk to Philip. And he noticed that the Holy Spirit hadn't come on these new believers yet. And so they decided to lay their hands on the believers and invite the Holy Spirit into their lives. And then the Holy Spirit came uh, for those people. Uh, last Sunday, uh, Polly, after the service, asked me, she said, well, I, when do we get the Holy Spirit? And then she told me, because she already knew the answer, that it's when we believe. When we believe, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us and, and fills us. But, you know what? There can be a time when the Holy Spirit gets you. And that's when the miraculous happens. When we open ourselves up to the presence of God in such a way, then the Holy Spirit has all of us and we uh, ask God in such a way that our lives change and we go out into the world and we change the world by doing the miraculous. And you may be asking yourself, well, does the Holy Spirit have me? And if you have to ask that question, the answer is probably no. Look at the fruit and you're like, what are the fruit of the Holy Spirit? What did you learn in Bible school? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. There's a cheat sheet up here on the wall. <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. It's love. Uh, and if you are bearing love in your life, then the Holy Spirit has all of you. If you notice that you are being filled with joy and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness and self-control, if you're able to push off the sin that so easily entangles us, then the Holy Spirit might just have you. But if you notice that you're irritable and angry and upset and screaming and, and depressed and ha hate the world and everything that's in it, well, folks... The Holy, you're not letting the Holy Spirit have all of you. You're letting some other spirit have you. And God wants to cast out any evil spirits in your life just like He used uh, Philip to cast out evil spirits in people's lives. He wants only the holy inside of you. He wants to have holy all of you and, and use you holy in the world to do miraculous events. And so, in your life, if you're going, well, I really want that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. Well, ask for the gift. Say, God, if there's more of you, oh, I want it. 
God, if, if there's something that's going to give me this love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentle self-control, I want that. I, I want you to cast out any hate that's in my life. I, I, I want you to show me how to love my neighbor as you love me. I, I, I want all of you, Lord. And if you really want all of God, guess what? God will give all of Himself to you. And the more that you open yourself to God's presence, the more that these attributes will, will come into your life. The more the fruit will blossom and grow and mature. And the, as more and uh, as we allow that Spirit to be fertilized by God's grace and changed, then the fruit will grow and our, our relationship with God will be like you've never imagined before. And, and that relationship will be so wonderful and full that there's nothing in the world that can shake you or shatter you at all because you and God are one and God is using you in miraculous, wonderful ways. And the only thing that you have to do is say, God, I want that gift. The Bible tells us that you who will give good gifts to your children, how much more will God give the Holy Spirit if you ask? The problem is we really don't want the Holy Spirit in our life. We really don't. Because you know why? That means we're going to change. We're going to be transformed. We're going to be different. We're going to love others differently. The, the hurt and racism and, and, and stuff that's inside of us, the darkness, the, the evil, the, the sin is going to be cast out. And, and we're going to live differently than those around us. And the people are going to look at us and go, there is something different there and I want it too. And then they're going to ask you, what in the world is up with you? Because I want it too. And if you really want the presence of God in your life in such a powerful way, man, do it. Ask for it. And keep asking for it. And you'll notice that you're going to start hungering more for God's Word. And you, you're not going to be able to get enough of reading the Bible. And, 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 and on Sunday morning, instead of waking up and yawning and going, well, I could really just use another hour of sleep, you're going to hop out of bed and say, I can't wait to go worship God. And thank God for what God's doing in my life. And, 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 and you're going you're gonna to want to share that relationship that you have with others and, and, and things are going to be different at work and in, in relationship with your family and, and, and all of these things are going to be different. And, and Do you want it? Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Do you want all that God has for you? Is there something missing that you feel? Is there something that, that just feel a hole in your heart and in your life and you, you just feel lost or alone or are you just... Ask God for all that God has for you. The problem with Simon is he wanted to pay so that people would think highly of him. He wanted to be able to do these miracles so that people would go, man, that dude is powerful instead of saying, God is powerful. Do you want the Holy Spirit to have all of you? And say, God, here I am. Do with me what you will. Fill me completely and utterly until the miraculous happens all around. Lord, come. Holy Spirit, come. And see and feel and know the love that God has for you in a way that you never could have hoped or imagined or experienced before. Will you ask for the greatest gift of all? And that's God holy inside of you.
Let us pray. God, there's some people here this morning that are hungering for more of You. Or maybe there's even some people here who don't even know You yet. And so first, we invite them to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. To put their whole trust in Your grace and know that their sin is forgiven through the sacrifice of Your Son. They repent of those sins that they've committed against You and against their neighbor. And God, now that they've repented, they may be hungering for more. They want a relationship with You like they've never experienced. They want to be filled with Your Spirit. They want that gift to come and fill them right now. And we thank You that You're filling them in miraculous ways. May they feel and know Your presence. May they see the miraculous happen through them. May You well up the gifts inside of them to change the world. May they hunger and thirst for righteousness. May they hunger and thirst for You. May they hunger and thirst to feed the world. And as You feel them, Lord, speak to their hearts. And give them the assurance of Your faith and of Your presence there. May You fill them with joy to overflowing. May the fruits of the Spirit just well up inside of them of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. May they see the change in their life. May they feel that joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength. May we have that in ourselves and in our lives. And, and may we be used by You to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And may You use us to do the miraculous in other people's lives. And we can't thank You enough for that gift You've given. We can't thank You enough for the love that You have for us. Thank You, Lord, for the Spirit coming into our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. During our last hymn, we open the altar for you to pray. You can come forward and, and pray for as long as you like. If you'd like me to come pray for you, come tell me. Otherwise, I'll just let you play, pray at the altar by yourself. Maybe this morning you uh, gave your life again to Jesus Christ, or maybe you gave your life to Jesus Christ for the first time. We'd like you to come down during this song and and uh, just witness to that fact this morning. Uh, or maybe you've been visiting this church for a while and you'd like to make this your church family where you're going to allow the Holy Spirit to fill you and change you and transform you into the very image of God. And we invite you to come down during this song and ask Jesus Christ uh, uh, to be part of this church family. There's a card in your pew rack. You can fill that out. However God is inviting you to respond, say yes with all your heart. Let us stand together and worship and praise our living King.
Now let us go out into the world to be used by the Holy Spirit to do the miraculous, to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, and to love the world the way that God loves it. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ we go. Amen.